Hoi everyone, welcome to episode 34 of Heroic Nonsense. This week we'll be checking out the down and dirty dreadnought poacher Nagahide and his pets Porkbelly and Yobo. Lots in this episode, including a comparison to his original figure. I've also been playing around with new ways to explore and present these figures in more dynamic ways, so stick around until the end for all this and more. By the way, next week is a special review, and there's a hint somewhere in this video of who that will be. Could be beginning, middle, or end, or anywhere in between. Let's see if you can figure it out. Now, Nagahide is probably not the top of the list of characters I would typically do a spotlight on for these reviews. We have a ton more higher profile figures that I could have followed up my Sergeant Sauter review with. By the way, check out the review with guest reviewer Zazel with Sarge cameo here and below. However, I thought he would be a fun one to give to the boys now, and since doing it, I have to say he is quite the toy. He's a deluxe figure, not only in sculpt and size, but also in the way that he comes with a ton of amazing accessories and weapons, many of which are based off of his original ones, and his not one, but two pets. So all the original Dreadnoughts had very unique looks to them, most being based off of a biker gang aesthetic or an 80s post-apocalyptic style. As the Dreadnoughts progressed, they became even more outlandish, and I'd say Nagahide was right at the tipping point. In the classified figure, that original Dreadnought feel is there, but taken to a whole new outback level, with his yellow fur vest, no shirt mind you, the multiple animal teeth necklaces, wristbands, and other accessories, and his Akubra styled hat. Take that, and add in the ton of extra weapons he comes with, and you have a very imposing and distinct figure. I don't think they ever really officially explained where he came from, possibly South Africa or Australia, but he definitely has an Aussie feel to him with that hat. His face replicates and updates really well and realistically, something the other recent Dreadnought release, Road Pig, wasn't able to do as well, with his characteristic scowl showing his teeth, his angry demeanor, and his mutton chops beard. You also see here that great leathery Akubra hat with the teeth and his necklaces, one of which has a bunch of dog tags likely from his victims. The hat is removable, which once removed reveals a scar which appears to be from an animal's claws, perhaps even coming from his pet macaque, as well as a very cool and detailed snake tattoo on the left side of his bald head. On his left arm he has an anarchy tattoo which is new to the figure, though we'll see later inspired by the original figure, and an armband with more animal teeth. While his right arm has a huge skull and knife based tattoo which is unique to the classified figure. The only problem with having ink that big is that it kind of breaks apart when you position the arm in different ways, but understandably unavoidable. With a bit closer look at his torso, you can appreciate the tons of detail included in his design, from the leopard spots on his vest to all the detailed arm and wristbands, to his belt full of various types of grenades. I think they did a bang up job on his jean style cargo pants and the really well designed knife sheath and pouch on his right lower leg with removable knife. On his back, you see the tons of detail they added in for the leopard spots, as well as a second animal skin knife sheath with some added tassels, also containing a removable knife. I love this shot of all his weapons and accessories. They include his rifle carrying case and rifle, his arrow quiver with a spot for one removable arrow, his two necklaces and hat, two knives, and finally his machete. It's great that they added this carrying case with a gun that can actually be disassembled so that it can be stored and carried when not in use. Realistic to a hunter carrying many weapons and constantly on the move. The rifle comes with a stand, a sight, a silencer, and removable cartridge, all of which fits perfectly in the case. Assembled, the weapon looks amazing and is extremely detailed. It fits him perfectly and updates nicely the original 118 scaled one that he came with. Once stored away, Nagahide can hook the extremely detailed case on his quiver or carry it in his hand. And where instead he wants to store away his bow, it can also be placed on his backpack quiver in a similar way which looks great. I find that trying to get a figure in this scale to hold a bow and arrow correctly can be a bit difficult, but is doable. I have to say putting the arrow on in this way was not easy and would only be manageable if you have a very good display, not prone to much movement. The machete can be held, but like the original, is really meant to be strapped to the arm like so. It's a big machete to say the least and looks pretty damn cool. I don't know if this is something people do, but it sure does look intimidating. My boys originally placed it this way, which I likely wouldn't have thought of, so credit to them for thinking of this. It not only looks really good, but means he can carry it this way while still having access to his lower arm and hand to do other things with. I always like little details like this where a small detail can add a ton to the figure, character, and look. This sheath in this position just feels right, and you can imagine Nagaide hunting an animal or a Joe and slowly pulling out his knife from his back sheath in this way. Great for displays. You can also see how his knee guard on his left knee is used for crouching. Again, a nice realistic addition that fits his character's MO. 
Once you get the right positioning, Nagahide can be placed in this needling position, which for me is the best display look for him and the way I plan on now displaying him going forward. He's a hunter after all, and he'd be doing a lot of crouching in this way. Even though it may look like he's leaning up against his rifle for balance, he actually balances perfectly with or without this crutch. Now onto the animals, starting with Porkbelly, who is a warthog. So where the face sculpt on Nagahide really looks realistic, this design takes up a notch from that. This thing actually, in my opinion, looks too realistic. It's big, mean, and dirty looking. You would not want to run into this warthog in the wild. If you know anything about these animals, they can be quite dangerous and aggressive if cornered, and this one looks like their king. In a way, it's actually a bit disturbing in that it's so realistic and scary looking. Porkbelly's mouth showing those tusks opens, the head moves from side to side, it has this huge mane, and the legs have multiple joints, all to serve the multiple positions you can place Porkbelly in. It also has rings pierced through the snout and ears, making Porkbelly look even more crazy. Great job on the design for sure. Yobo is the second animal Nagahide comes with. He doesn't have any points of articulation, but does look as mean and a bit psycho, so a great addition to Nagahide's team. He even comes with an eye patch to boot. Putting them all together and you get this. And now you can see why I thought this was a perfect next figure to review from the classified line. Now that's a dreadnought. And now looking at the animals he comes with and his leopard vest, I'm fairly certain he's from somewhere in Africa. Alright, now the classified Nagahide versus my original 118 scaled version. Let's see how these two compare to each other. It's immediately evident that the classified figure is really just a more detailed upscaled replica of the original. All the major cues are hit including that hat, the yellow spotted vest and blue pants, the necklaces and even things like the leg knife and sheath, though on the opposite leg and different position, and of course the wristbands. The sculpt and colors on classified Nagahide have definitely been updated to look more realistic, most evident on the hat where the classified version really looks incredible. More importantly, the designers replicated and updated the face perfectly. This is what a face updated from the 118 scale figures should look like. They even included the idea of the knife and sheath on the back placed on slightly differently, and the multiple spots on the vest. You can also see the various grenades that we saw earlier on the front of classified Nagai's belt on the 118 belt, mostly evident on the back. I had to take a picture of the tattoo to look at it closer, and it actually is a Red G.I. Joe logo crossed out in a circle. From far it looks a bit like an anarchy symbol, which is what they decided to go with on the classified version. The 118 scaled version didn't come with a monkey, but he did come with a warthog, so here we have the two next to each other. Nagahai couldn't have been released without it, but glad they went the extra mile to make Porkbelly pretty much a figure on its own. I unfortunately don't have Nagahai's 118 weapons with me here. That's the price you pay for keeping most of your 118 scaled collection at your parents who are 6 hours away, but I think you get the idea. I have to say though that it's truly great having my originals to compare the new line to and share with my kids. And let's throw the Dreadnought crew together, shall we? At least the ones I've opened to date, with their 118 scaled counterparts, though in this case I had to use the Zartan and Zorana figures that came with the Soundwave Thunder Machine crossover, because those are actually the few I never had as a kid. Like I had said for my slaughter review, the front panels of the new packages aren't that great in my opinion, but with these more deluxe figures, it kinda looks not bad because there's so much that is included. I do still love the way they display the figures on the back, and this is no exception, so we at least get this, with some extra small images of some of the figure details. This side panel also has really fantastic art. Wish we could see more of this, but they do do a great job with such little real estate. Man, that boar still looks scary. The great thing about this figure is all the ways he can be displayed with the ton of accessories and pets he comes with. I particularly like this shot of him with pork belly. You can almost imagine him stalking some prey in the darkness of the jungle somewhere, surrounded and hidden by deep lush foliage. One of my other favorite shots of Nagahide with his pets, which we saw earlier, standard shot but a classic pose that looks great for him. This along with the first shot has to be one of my favorites. I love this look with him crouched down getting ready to take on some Joes. Again, really like the rifle design and how he looks holding it. From behind, in this pose, it looks like he's checking out some tracks in the mud. You can see how realistic he can look if you set everything up just right. And here he's putting on his silencer. I think it's pretty clear I can't get enough of this pose at this point. The point is, there are tons of ways to pose him doing different things given all the parts he comes with. Zartan and Zorana waiting impatiently here as Nagahai tracks some Joes. I would have loved to have shown you all the Dreadnoughts together, but we haven't opened these three yet. I absolutely cannot wait to open them and display them all together, especially once Xandar comes out. And finally, a few more of these more dynamic shots I've been working on, in this case loosely based on Nagahide's DIC appearances where he worked to reinstate Cobra Commander with the Baroness. There was a scene like this in Serpy's throne room with some Python Patrol soldiers, so thought I'd do something based off of that. 
And here, from the same storyline, the Baroness jaded from Destro falling for Zorana with Nagahai choosing sides. Another cool concept, not based on anything specifically, but an iconic image of the Dreadnoughts and their motorcycles somewhere desolate and dusty. And finally, another DIC-inspired shot. And why, you may ask? Well, when the cartoon went over to DIC, the production and storylines changed, and you ended up having certain newer Cobra characters, whether individuals or soldiers, being placed together, whether it made sense or not. I recall these two being in a lot of scenes together, and I do love Metalhead. And you know what, because I like you guys so much, I'm going to add in one more DIC cartoon inspired image. This one where Naga Hyde, Alley Viper, and some Python Vipers are all surrounding Serpentor somewhere in who knows where. So that's it for this week. Hope you enjoyed this G.I. Joe classified figure episode of Naga Hyde and his pets. I do enjoy doing these classified figure reviews every so often, and will likely throw in some more here and there, or even perhaps some group ones. See you all next time. And remember... Till all are one. Transform!